first scrimmage on, on Saturday. Yep. How'd that go for your group and what'd you think? You know, we got a lot of good play. We have a, a like a lot of depth, you know, and so we wanted to get some of the the um, the guys that are behind the front six to build some depth. So we got those guys a lot more reps than we did uh, the starters. So, um, you know, it may not have looked as efficient as I think that we're going to look, um, but we did get a lot of work in there with the two. So it went well, when is expected. Speaking of those top six, yeah. what's the difference between last year when a lot of them were new versus this year when at least all of them had at least one year under their belt? Yeah, you, so the good thing about experience is now you can take your offense kind of like to the next level. All right, so you can start building in more creative things. Uh, when you got a bunch of new guys, it's hard to be extremely creative because they're just learning the baseline offense. And to put little nuances in, um, and I think that's where coaches make a lot of mistakes, they start putting the nuances in too early. Um, I'd rather a guy have his baseline and play really, really fast knowing that. And then later on, and sometimes that is like a whole nother year from now, then you can start being a little bit more creative. So I think that's, that's where we're at now. We're able to do more stuff. Jordan Hudson's going into his second year. He was also one of the younger guys. Is that one of those examples where you can add more to his toolbox? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, I always talk about the three phases that you're in. You know, first you gotta learn what to do, right? And it takes a lot longer for some guys to get to that point. You know, and then it's then it's how you do it, okay? So if I, if first, if I first phase is I'm learning how, to, uh, that I need to run a post curl. The second phase is, okay, now, I can stop, I can scan the defensive structure. How am I gonna run that post curl? All right, and then the final phase is you bypass all of those thoughts and you just run it really, really, really fast because you're there. And you know, he wasn't there. He wasn't in that third phase last year, you know, and so now he's he's dipping into that third phase and doing more with him and all that stuff. So I think he's gonna play faster and play better. How are you seeing a guy like Ashton Cozart start to work? Obviously, I think he probably fits in that mold. You were saying of the second team that maybe outside that. Yes. Six. How have you seen him grow since he arrived? Yeah, you know, he's still in that first phase of learning what to do, you know, and it's his job to get him get himself out of that phase. And, and you know, my, my job as well. But, uh, uh, you know, he's still in that first phase and, and he's got the talent. He's got great feet. Um, he's got speed, quickness, and he can catch. Uh, we're just still t pushing him to try to get to that next level. With with the uh, rotation, is do you how do you handle that this year? You know, do you want to see you know a, a number one type emerge and force you to keep him out there the whole time? Or oh know, yeah, you gonna... you always want that. Yeah. You always want a guy where he comes off the field. There's going to be a little letdown, like in talent and everything. I mean, that's that's like your number one guy. Now, and we had that with Rasheed. Uh, <clears throat> fortunately, though, here. We got some really good players, and when a guy comes out, there's not that much of a letdown at all, if, if any. Sometimes the guy going in might even be a little bit better at a certain skill or a certain route than the guy that just came out. So that's where we're at uh, right now. But, um, you know, I've won doing it both ways. You know, it's always great, especially to the public, to have that one guy and everybody knows about. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'd rather have six really good dudes than just one great guy and everybody else be average. And I think that's what we got. To that point, have you seen your the six or so really elevate that level uh, that you wanna see this year going into their, most of their second years in, with the group? Mostly, yeah. you know, there's been some disappointing moments, you know, and I've had those conversations with those guys uh, and that's gonna happen in football. Um, but I feel good. I do feel good where we're at. How much do you have you gotten to to coach and to work around with Rashard Smith and Derek McFall, two guys that kind of seem versatile but seem like they can have impact both the running and receiving game? How much do you work with them? Yes, and it does help that I, I did coach Brashard. He was in my room um, as a wide receiver at Miami. So got a pretty good baseline of how to run routes. But Coach Coop, Coper's been been with us ever since. He's heard everything I've ever said at running routes and he does a fantastic job, so he's very capable of being able to do both in his room. Um, but there's, yeah, very little things that I, I tell those guys right now. What, what have you thought about Romello? Just, I mean, he added, he told us 10 pounds and, and just seems a little bit more comfortable this year. Yeah, I, you know, if I had to single out one guy that probably improved the most since last year, it would be him. Um, I think he's doing a fantastic job of developing into an all-around wide receiver. Um, he's physical, he'll block, he's fast, 
He's rangy. Um, he's athletic. You can throw a screen to him. You can throw a deep ball to him. Uh, and those are the things that you want. So just watching him um, make that jump um, is very exciting. Jake and uh, Roderick in the slot, what have you seen from them? And, and you know, they're, they're kind of two different guys uh, from what it seems like just on the field. Yeah, I need to get all my interviews in this year because when those two guys leave, I'm going to be not a very good coach. You guys probably won't want to talk to me much anymore because, <laughs> man, do those guys make my job so easy because, number one, they help coach everybody else. They're extremely intelligent and extremely uh, uh, um just really good feel football players like they know how to get in space and they can teach all of those things and talk to all my other guys because I got like I got 19 guys in my room so I'm coaching over here well they help me over coaching with with other guys and um, we can do so much with the threes like when I tell coach you know if he wants to like change a play or change the way we do something I go oh that's easy as long as it's a three because those guys pick it up just like that. They're so intelligent and so much experience that I don't even worry about them. I don't even really think about those guys. <laughs> Seems like it's a constant theme in a lot of spaces, but how do you balance you know, guys pushing to be the starter, being yeah. that one, but also the understanding that there are a lot of reps to be had, especially the pace of the offense and, and everything else? Yeah, exactly, and that's a great, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's a great question. Um, you know, the way we do it here is, you know, I go into the room every day, we don't have starters. We have guys that rotate. You decide who starts by how you practice that week. And those will be the dudes that run out onto the field first. That's how we do it. How big is it to have Ryan Jenkins now able to like really assist you oh, and man. just another eyes to, to actually talk to players on the field and just overall that the, the growing on field group that can help? Right. First, I'd like to say that Derek King started in my room. So if he becomes this great coach, offensive coordinator, he started. <laughs> as my G, uh, GA last year, or Q, whatever they call him, QC. So he was in my room first, so I taught him everything that he knows. But no, Ryan uh, Jenkins, um, you know, is a former player of mine at Arizona State, so he already knows my language, which is huge as a coach, because he speaks my language to the guys. Actually, now, um, you know, we can split up and they can, we can meet separately. He could take the young guys, I could take the older guys, which is, Man, that's huge because, like I said, I got 19 guys. It's hard to split my time up everywhere. So, no, he, he makes my job so much easy, man, easier. What's the offensive coaching staff like? I mean, you've got a head coach that calls plays. Yeah. Offensive call, you've been an offensive coordinator. Coach Justice has been – like, you've got a lot of guys that have been through it. What's that collaboration like when you guys are kind of able to bring a lot of different – a lot of different viewpoints and experiences into it? Yes. No, and that's, like I said, another great question um, because – that could backfire on you sometimes. I've, I've done it both ways where there's one guy, he says everything and that's it, you shut the heck up. He tells you what to do and then you do it. And I've been successful and scored a lot of points doing it that way. Red is not that way. He wants to know your thoughts. He wants to hear what you have to say. He goes around the room. He has a special ability. I think it all comes down to the guy that's got to make the final decision, which is Rhett. He, has an, he does an amazing job of being able to go through all of that information quickly right and not letting it bog him down in what his thoughts are but he listens to everybody's point of view boom okay listen think 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 make a decision and i think he's very special in that way and that's why it works for us it's because of him